Welcome to the Step Up Podcast. Insights from experts to step up your business, your life, and your wealth. Step Up is provided by Agency Bloom, today's number one superhero for wholesale services to digital agencies. Get ready to propel your business from ordinary to extraordinary. Here's your host, Matt Coffey. Hey, welcome to the Step Up podcast or show. And we're talking today with Frank Ferrante. Now, Frank is a very interesting subject. The movie Let Me Be Frank is a movie about him. And today's Step Up episode is about stepping up in your life. And this is more about your health, wellness, and psychologically uh, getting yourself to step up. Frank was, um, before this movie, or during this movie, if you want to say, he started out as a 54-year-old 300-pounder. Uh, lifetime of drug abuse, alcohol abuse, diseases, medications, depressants. He drinks five to ten espressos a day just to keep awake. And he goes through an amazing transformation uh, once he stumbles into uh, Cafe Gratitude in San Francisco, which is a raw food uh, diet type of uh, cafe. And, you know, this is kind of the opposite of supersized me, if you want to think about it. It's more of the unsupersized me. And he gets down uh, to the point where he breaks down and goes through an entire um, transformation of now he's a very fit, very healthy individual, great attitude. But it was done in just 40 days. And that's the thing that really is amazing is how quickly he changed his body, his mindset. And really the story is about Um, being able to love yourself and relationship wise, being able to, you know, change the way you think about things. Really want to get into the discussion here with Frank. If you do get an opportunity, go see the movie. It's on Hulu. Uh, I know you can get it in Amazon, uh, but it is free on Hulu. I'll put the links here. Again, the movie is called, uh, may I be Frank and we'll talk to Frank Ferrante right now. The main thrust of this podcast is about stepping up in business and stepping up in life and I really think that the health wellness and the structure of what you've done uh, fits really well into a mix of things that happen for a lot of the business owners and entrepreneurs that we work with that can parallel with some of the things that you do okay <laughs> did that make you know, sense to you right now but really Matt I, honestly I mean and, and this may I guess in some worlds, in some circles, sound naive. I don't see a distinction between the two. Um, I think that, in my view, and I'll be happy to repeat this: that all relationships, if they are if they are powerful and successful relationships, are rooted in integrity, and and uh, and and um, and you know integrity. And that means that's not just you know that's not just cash register integrity. You know that's really all the way around and so whether it's a familial relationship or whether it's a a fraternal relationship or or a business relationship or a romantic relationship fundamentally they have to be rooted in the same place in order for them to flourish and uh, and so I don't you know I don't see so in, in that respect I don't see it thank you so my girlfriend just bought me tea in that respect um, I don't see a distinction um, and so I don't know if that if that resonates with you, but that's my, that's the way I see the world. Well, it's very true. I think one of the parts of going through life is understanding how to get above the challenges and the blockades that are in our life. And, you know, I'll, I'll give a brief history of my understanding of, of your world, and then you can tell me, you know, what's going on. But, you know, I came across you in a couple of different ways. I, I, not necessarily in the in the exact kind of pattern that you'd think, but I ran across you somewhere, and it was something about an award you had won. So I guess the the, the film, uh, you know, that you are so now famous for, which is the the, the May I Buy Frank movie, um, won a lot of esteem. I mean, because I think it kind of captured one of the things that most people just don't see, which is. It's emotionally crossing people into forgiving themselves, and that's kind of what I think that whole movie was about. Very astute, my friend. Very astute. Right. So you probably learned the lesson after you left the 
Catholic church that you belong to and got the talking to that probably made the things click in your head that said, hey, you know, I'm not, the only way that this is going to work is when you start to forgive yourself and then everything else will fall into place. Yeah, and the, and the, the root to that, um, that I, you know, that I discovered, and after a long time, is that I, for, this is my experience, is that I had to forgive the others before really being able to forgive myself and by the way it's an ongoing process because you know it's it's uh, i guess there's a place that you get to where you just like you know forgive everything about yeah, forgive yourself completely i'm still on the road i mean there's things that you know i've i have uh, yes there's things that i still there's still a little uh they're still painful when i think about them and maybe they'll be there forever but you know, forgiving forgiving myself started with forgiving others, and uh, and then I st and people always say, well, you can't love anybody till you love yourself, and all that. You know, that's BS. Um, you know, there were there were times when I was feeling tremendously low self esteem, but I loved my kids. You know, maybe not in the way that I would have liked to, or the way they needed me to, but I certainly, you know, my heart was able was loved as much as it was able to under those circumstances. So, uh, you know, I, I really. Think that um, that all these things are are a practice, you know. So you practice forgiving, you practice forgiving, and then you learn how to do it to yourself. Yeah. So interesting. So this podcast is really about stepping up and stepping up into, as I mentioned, into your greatness and stepping up into the role of trying to become not necessarily, you know, the the leader or the the thought leader, but really just trying to become what you should become and, and being. Uh, really into the world, what would you recommend to people uh, to to really step up in their lives? The what worked for me was uh, what, first of all what uh, I had to. Um, so, for example, let's take an extreme case, like when I was drinking, right, and I couldn't stop drinking. There was a point where I had to, I had to face the fact that my best thinking wasn't working and that I had to humble myself and and find another way and and usually when people want to step up into their and and, and, and that that took a tremendous amount of humility I, I had to you know I had to be prepared to ask for help and I had to admit that my way wasn't working and when people want to step up I mean what it, I'm not you know whatever that means at any given time like step up into their own lives well does that mean uh, you want to, you know, you want to lose weight? Do you want to get into a relationship? Do you, do you, you know, want to have more peace of mind? You know, whatever those, whatever, whatever it is, whatever that, whatever it is that you're talking about stepping into, requires um, a degree of humility and um, and so, you know, and and willingness, and then and then you know the decision to do whatever it takes to 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 achieve that, and. And that decision has to be rooted in a place of integrity, where, where you calculate, you know, you make decisions that are that are in your best interest, but that you know they are not at the expense of anyone else. And making a making a decision that's in your best interest without it being at the expense of someone else, and and uh, usually, you know, like you know, those those things will definitely lead you in a direction in the general direction of where of what you want but what you what i've always re what i've realized so many times in my life is i have this goal i want this particular thing and on my way to you know i make it this but what what i find are that all these other all of a sudden i i discover pieces of information that i wasn't aware of and and the analogy i draw to that is when i was in graduate school which wasn't that long ago I would be given. I have to do a paper, and the, the the professor would give me a bibliography, and this is a these are the books to you know, these are the basic books to go look up in the stacks that you're going to need to refer to. Well, when I went to the stacks, what happened was I see the the books that she told me to get, and all around these books were all of these questions I never thought to ask, 
and these all of these colors that were relative to this subject that never occurred to me. So the idea, you know, so what I'm saying is like, so you have a goal of whatever that is, but be open and prepared for an expansion that you didn't expect because you took the chance of, you know, going in a direction that you weren't familiar with. So awesome. I, I really appreciate that input because it kind of highlights what I wanted to ask you next was, you know, you went through one of the greatest transformations uh, in film that I've ever seen, right? And I'm sure we don't need to sugarcoat it. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> no, no. And Neither birth, by the way. Right. There is birth. I don't know if you're a, if you're a dad, but if you've witnessed yes. the birth, of, I mean, I witnessed the birth of my both both my children. It's not pretty. It's not something that you would call pretty. It's very dramatic, uh, very very uh, frightening. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of screaming going on and body fluids flo flying all over the place. There's a couple of people in the room that are centered and grounded and know what's going on, but the principals, the you know, the, of the the mother and father are, are you know freaking out. Um, or at least, uh, you know, in a, in a pretty intense state of being. And yet, um, out of all that, uh, all that uh, perceived, mind you, perceived being the operative word, chaos, emerges a life. And then all the drama that precipitated the birth drifts into a, you know, drifts into a, a, a memory. Right. You know? right. So, and that's what transformation is like. It's a birth. The transformation is a, is a birth. And, and there's no way to do it without a degree of discomfort. It's impossible. Right. And, and I look back at your timeline. So, you know, before the movie was, you, you, you went through some transformations before even the movie, right? Because before the movie, I think that you were already off of most of the drugs and alcohol that Right, I was sober for 17 years at the and when the film was shot, I was I had I was already sober. And and you know, and I was in my in my mid 50s and so um certainly uh, you know, it, I was had gone through a bunch of stuff, you know, people I you know, by that point most people have gone through a number of of transformative or transformational experiences. I certainly did. But my question was is you know, it leads the question to what were you doing, right? So this is the the question that I had before, and you know, obviously you have to really watch this movie to get the gist of the the transformation we're talking about, which was really fast, and and just it, you have to kind of get your head around what can be done. That that's really the story, besides the you know learning to forgive yourself. But I think there's another, obviously, you know, what the body can really do. Uh, given its, you know, uh, given its agency that it, that it has, but my question was, what were you doing before that? Like before we enter the 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 restaurant and before we're involved with the filmmaking, wh what were you doing from a lifestyle? And now you're completely it looks like you're mainly on the road doing speaking and speaking coaching. Like, what was the process of your? your lifestyle, you know, obviously after you got sober, but before you went into this? Well, before, before walking into the restaurant, um, I had reached a, a plateau in my life. I, um, you know, <clears throat> uh, drugs and alcohol, or whether it's drugs, alcohol, sex, gambling, you name, whatever the shopping, whatever the thing, whatever the, whatever the behavior or the, or the substance, is a symptom of a deeper underlying condition. The drugs are neutral. Alcohol is neutral. Food is neutral. The goods in the store are neutral. But it's my relationship to those things that that manifest the behavior, you know, whatever the behavior is behind it. Anyway, so when I I put down the drugs and alcohol, and that was you know that was an important part of my life, and I you know and I lived a clean and sober life, but but. But I was stagnant. I had reached a place of stagnation spiritually, physically. I was deteriorating because because there, you know really stagnation is kind of a misnomer. You actually you actually it's actually a state of decay. You know, stagnation is is for me a state of I consider it a state of, of decay. You're you're in a process of decomposition of some kind, and that's what was happening to me physically. That was that was manifesting physically. I was gaining weight um, and and. Uh, my refuge were my refuge uh, was um, 
uh, buffet restaurants, particularly Indian buffet restaurants. And, uh, and so at that point in my life, I, 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 I knew that I had to change something, that something had to shift, but I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't even know what I needed to address. All I knew is I could not stand being my, my way of being anymore. The uh, when a, a chick when when a bird is in an egg, the reason it pecks at the shell is not because it's feeling adventurous. It's because it's because its environment had become so putrid that it, now it looks for an escape. And and nature is full of these wonderful il illustrations and metaphors about how you know passages through life. And that's where I was in my life. I was the bird in the shell that was becoming putrid, and I didn't even know. I didn't know what was outside that shell that I had created in my consciousness, because my consciousness was limited to that the interior of that shell, and and um, uh, I couldn't bear it any longer. And on some level, I believe that I called in the forces that showed up, and um, so at that point in my life, I just was, as I said, was stagnant and. And, uh, you know, there's, and transformation is not a straight line like life, Matt. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, I mean, I don't think you know anybody either that goes in life from A to Z without any interruption. You know, it doesn't happen that way. And uh, um, it may appear that way, but it's, that's the illusion. Um, uh, often, often the spiritual journey, life's journey, which is the spiritual journey in my view, Three steps forward, two steps backwards, four steps forward, and step back. You know, it's give and take. It's like you know, I, I I surrender, I take it back. I surrender, I take it back. I let go, I take it, and that's you know, that's been the cycle. You know, it's the spiritual cycle of life, and and uh, and um, um, I think I think I think that answered your question. I hope well, it did. <laughs> you know, I think that what you got to was the point of you know why is the public so interested in this, right? So. You know, I look at this, you know, we're in a business environment where a lot of the podcasts we do relate to business topics and so forth and people growing their business and entrepreneurs and 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 I look at really one of the things that I learned out of what you kind of went through was being present, right? So big, big question mark for me is I think a lot of people don't think about the present as much as they should from an aspect of enjoying the joy of just being, where everybody's just trying to get to the next level, and I always say step up, but in a way, I think the process of enjoying that moment of being able to be present in your uh, evolving learning, I think is a real key takeaway that I think people get out of, at least I got out of watching you know, your transformation, which is how how you really realized how important things were as opposed to where you had started, where you were really kind of um, mesmerized by maybe not the, the, the quotient of their, the sum of all your life, but more about the, the things that were really important, which seemed to me that you had got connections that were missing. And I think that we're all kind of, trying to find connections and the joy of finding connection is maybe the part where I, I really found some interest. Uh, Joseph Campbell said that uh, people waste their time trying to figure out the meaning of life <clears throat> because what people really want is, is uh, to feel alive. It, you know, and, and when you really feel alive, you're not really, you're not suffering from all these existential questions. And, um, you know, I, I'm reminded of, uh, in, you know, in the film, there's a part where, uh, there's, a, there's this part where it's showing photographs. And when they were doing the film, there's this photograph of me, I'm in my early 30s, like I'm 31 or something, and I'm, I'm uh, in front of the bathroom mirror, mirror, I'm getting ready to go out. And I looked at this picture and I thought, my God, I was really, I was really a handsome guy. And then I got sad because I remembered at the time, in order for me to see myself with any kind of value, I needed about four or five drinks in me. You know, after my sixth shot of vodka, I was like, hey, look at that guy. You know, isn't he great? But, but, but 
I thought, I looked at that, you know, and I thought, well, you know, look at what I missed from not seeing reality for what it really was at that moment. And I, I thought, what if that's true now? Because, you know, there's days you look in the mirror and you look great. And the next, you know, 24 hours later, you look like you're ready to just, you know, just look horrible. And it's all a matter of perception. It's, you know, it's, it's all we have is this very moment. And, and, um, and sometimes, I guess, reality is unbearable for people. And so they have to be either in the past or the future, and, which is an illusion. Um, you know, and so, but everything, you know, everything that, that has any meaning is happening right this second. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're frivolous and you don't think about the future. You don't, like, make plans or, you know, set some kind of ideal or intention or anything like that. It doesn't mean any of that. It doesn't mean to not, to not be responsible. It just means that you, you, you make a plan or you have an ideal or an, or, or an intention and, and then you remember where you are at this moment and the value of where you are at this moment. Um, you know, and that means you know, rolling with the punches. Like, for example, like when I, I was <clears throat> years ago when my kids were little, I was going to go on vacation and we had all the bags at the door and ready to, ready to take off. And all of a sudden, one of the kids starts vomiting. You know, that's the end of the vacation, right? So like, boom, that, you know, the kid got sick at the last minute. So I could regret that and think about what I missed or, you know, I could say, well, okay, this is my reality and, and deal with it and uh, not resent the kid and, and, um, and try to approach the situation with love as best I could. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And I think it, it kind of gets into my next set of questions. And I really uh, think, you know, being, being that you've come from a person who is – you know, basically a 300-pound just Goomba, right? You were just kind of there, right? But now yeah, you... Goomba is a generous term. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> but, right. but now, look, you now you have to step into this role, right? So now you're kind of the... Uh, what would you call yourself? Maybe you're a, an example of transformational success and um, the... Every every man's success could, or every man could go to your success level, given the fact of how quick you did it. And that was the thing that really got me into thinking about it. It changed some of the things I did in my diet and my my life because I realized, wow, it was so fast. And the guy's now he came from the three hundred pound dude to now he's this in shape guy. He's on the road and he's now a coach and a speaker and that's a massive change um so how are you learning to step into this role well um thank you for the, the observation um it it may seem fast to the observer it was excruciatingly slow to me <laughs> but um it was an art, man. I mean, like when I when I first uh, the first time I did a screening, it was a uh, it was an a incredible experience. It was four hundred and fifty people in a theater in San Francisco, and uh, and I was blown away. I, I just I, I walked into you know like the film was over. I walked down the aisle, people standing ovation, and and like you know I had just lost the weight. And I went from, you know, for having no self-esteem and I had worked at that point, worked my way up to low self-esteem. And all of a sudden, you know, from beating myself up for, you know, the life I led, and the, you know, the failures and all of that, all of a sudden I'm standing in front of an audience of 450 pe people cheering me like crazy. And, and it, was, it was almost traumatic in the sense that I felt like such an imposter and so undeserving of that recognition and I had no idea of what people were seeing and um, it took me it took me a while and you know part of that is like what you're talking about stepping up and is to you, it, you know another way of looking at it is to catch up to who you are you know like there was there was the me that really was and then it was the me that I thought I was and the series and, and, and the stories that I was continuing to tell myself diminishing stories that I was telling myself 
And and I, I would sometimes go to a screening. I would go back to my hotel room with my head in my hands in desperation, practically in tears, like thinking, oh, my God, you know, like, you know, like they're going to find me out. You know, like, I, they, don't they realize that I, like they, they don't they have me confused with somebody else. Then one day, a, a friend of mine. I was talking about this with a friend of mine and he said, Frankie, he goes, don't let your mess get confused with your message. Wow. And, I, and I thought, wow. He says, you know, he says some of the greatest things we've learned about being human have come from people that are profoundly flawed. And, uh, and I started thinking about just the people that founded the founders of AA, you know, like very flawed. One guy was the Bernie Madoff of his day. The other guy was a drunken drug addict, a proctologist surgeon. And these two guys... Uh, got together and figured out a system that enabled millions of people to get off alcohol, which had never been done before in history. Not like that. But they were very flawed people. And the great thing about that is that you can't deify them. You know, they, they can't be deified because they're so flawed. So the message is what you focus on. And so I started, you know, I started on the road of accepting this, you know, who I am. And somebody said, you know, Mandela said, Sometimes God sneaks up behind you and taps you on the shoulder and says, tag, you're it. And, you know, like little things like that, that people would tell me, you know. And I come to the conclusion that, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the biblical story of Jesus going into Jerusalem on the donkey. And, you know, Palm Sunday. I don't know, are you, are you familiar with that story? Yeah, sure. Okay, so the way I look at it is, you know, like, I'm the donkey. I'm carrying a message, right? That's all I'm doing. I am the bearer of a message, and and sometimes the donkey thinks they're throwing the palms at him. But really, I've been blessed with the capacity and the 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 the, um, the calling to talk about these things, to talk about a message that you know, and and that's you know that's all I am. I'm a ca I carry a message. That's it. There's nothing special about me. I'm not, you know, I don't have a secret trust fund. On the contrary, actually, um, and um, um, I'm just a working class, fairly, you know, well-educated, blue-collar, working-class son of immigrants that um, was lucky enough to and resilient enough to make it through these things in life and talk about it. What do you think what the attraction think? is to you from your side of the world? I've got in my head what. That attracted me because I emotionally connected with a lot of things. But when you, you now go speak, right, what do people say to you? Like when you're – whatever the last speaking event that you were you know, presiding at or, or, or screening or whatever, what do people come and talk to you about where they feel that you are going to have some sort of message to them directly that's going to change their life? I I think that uh, um, what I've what I've come what I what I've come to believe at this point is that that what people what I what I offer people by virtue of the way I show up is an invitation to a conversation and an exposure to a language that and permission to speak in a way that that they didn't think they could and. Um, and I hope what happens when I talk to people is that they feel like they're all right, you know, irrespective of their circumstance, <clears throat> whether it's, you know, lack of funds or, you know, like a lady the other day, I did a webinar, and, you know, this individual um, um, was very, you know, has a kid that's on heroin, you know, and didn't know what to do. And, you know, people like that or people, you know, people that um, talk to me about grief, or they talk, you know, they talk to me about health and weight loss and all that. But very often on the side, you know, after the movie or you know, where there's a there's a line where people line up and you know want to talk to me or get an autograph, which is really cool to be signing something that's not an affidavit. <laughs> uh, and uh, and um, and then privately ask me about stuff. Or say like, or they say like, I remind them of their father. They wish you know who's really sick and. I, you know, like, I wish he would do what you did because he's dying. Or my father is dead and I miss him and you remind me of my father. I get a lot of parent stuff. 
you know, I get a lot of a lot of um, a lot of parent parent stuff, which leads me to believe that one of the things that the world is desperate for are parents. And I don't mean a patriarchal you know, nonsense. I mean you know, like a mom and a dad, you know, and, and that's the way I see my role. I, I see my role as an elder at this point. I, I'm an elder. Every culture throughout history has had elders to help facilitate the next generation, you know, pass, help them with their passages through life. And that's how I see myself. I, you know, I'm not a wizard. I don't have the answer, you know. I, I have, you know, some. Ex I have experiences within certain aspects of life that were really challenging, and and you know, but it's not like, hey, if you do this, you know, do these ten things, and you know, change your life, and you know, make a million dollars. No, uh, I'm not that guy. You know, I'm, I'm not that guy. So, so where are you today? So, t let's talk about today, because we talked a lot about the past. So, let's talk about where today is and where you're going with your message, because I think. To me, you you had a real big momentum um, when the movie kind of came out. You had a jump start into kind of now, as we just talked about, filling your role. Now you're maturing into the role. I, I see you on various YouTube channels, and you know you you pop up here and there. And and now I think you have, you know, if, if I go to the website, which is your, you know, mayispeakfrankly.com, where you've got now a book. And mm -hmm. so can you talk a little bit about what you're doing now and, and what you're planning to do in the future to help um, maybe <clears throat> other people get through challenges? Because to me, I think what you're doing is helping people step up. That, that is to me, when I started this podcast, I said, there's one guy I want on my show. I want Frank. Because oh. he, he forced me to look at the, the reality of like what changes can be made in your life to have just dramatic impact in very short time. Well, I, I want to address the short time thing because it, it doesn't feel like a short time. And also it took me over a year to lose the weight. It's not like I lost the weight during the arc of the film. I mean, it was a year over a year of, of, uh, of being very, very conscious of, of what I was being conscious is really what it was being not, you know, eating, eating clean or working out regularly and I did this with help. I had a friend uh, that uh, was my accountability partner who was also an ex-drug addict and alcoholic. So whenever I didn't feel like going to the gym, it, I, I looked at the phone to call him to make an excuse. But I thought, it, it was the point. It's not going to fly. That, you know, it's because he was, he, was, he was like me. So he knew. You know, so, um, <clears throat> but what I'm doing now is, you know, so it, it, the short thing is like, and I think that one of the things in our culture is that we want things so fast and right away, and and I think it's it's uh, it's been a disservice. Certain things take a process. Grieving is a process. Somebody you love dies or breaks up with you. It takes time to heal that. You know, it's not two weeks and go out and screw somebody else. You know, or that whole thing. The fastest way to get over somebody is to get under somebody. <clears throat> I think that's such a crude and disrespectful. Uh, um, uh, disrespectful thing to say about a uh, way of, of looking at grieving, which is a sacred aspect of being human. It took me, it took what it took. Some people will take longer than others, and some, you know, some people will do it, you know, some people have a, they're, they're, people, different, people are different. It will take some people less time than others and some people more, whatever. The important thing is to engage in the process. That's the important and having an attachment to the amount of time, like I'm going to lose X amount of time in 30, you know, 20 days, um, it's, you, know, you want to set yourself up, I'm sure you do this in business, set yourself up to succeed. You know, set your, in the beginning, you know, if you're going to run a business, you know, I guess set yourself achievable goals so that you're not overwhelmed with failure and then you know, just get dispirited. Um, but what, and so that's the answer to that thing. But what I'm doing now is, is preparing... Um, to uh, you know, to to launch the book, and the book is a backstory on the film. It's a me partly memoir, but, you know. Basically, you know, the book reflects like what happens when Deep when uh, Tony Soprano meets Deepak Chopra, and um, and uh, and so I'm in the middle of that place, and in the middle is where I think most of the people that really would benefit by a, sh a transformation in their life would you know are. And also, and as you know, you probably know very well about critical mass. It takes 10% of a, you know, 10% that, that's, that's really hard to get to is that first 10%. But once you get enrolled, that 10% in, a, in the process, 
it becomes exponentially it, it grows exponentially from there and i think is that is that how i think that's the formula i read somewhere yeah that's pretty much it so um um so the you know so i'm 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 looking forward to getting out in the field and uh, you know and on the web but mostly out in the field because i i really love the interpersonal rela- relationships and interpersonal action uh react you know act, um interpersonal uh, relationships that I, that I have with people on the road i get a lot of juice from it you know whether it's on stage or or you know one to one um you know i just love that so i'm looking to really expand that yeah, I could see you creating a community even around your strategy um, that you could, you know, kind of become part of, uh, you know, and you had mentioned this before, there's this sort of transformational career, that path. There's a lot of speakers, there's a lot of people who are out there who have this, you know, you mentioned um, Tony Soprano meets Deepak Chopra, but I, you know, Chopra, there's a lot of other you know kind of correlations you could put together with that, which is great. I mean, I think you have you have such a a, a, a common man, as you mentioned, blue collar approach to this, which I think is left um left untouched by 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 really a lot of people, and I think that's where the connection is made by at least it was made by me to identify because you're not some sort of you know, guy who's made all this money and you've not come to the conclusion that because you've done all this crazy stuff that you're the spiritual warrior and you're not a Tony Robbins, you know, type of guy. You're 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 more of a a everyday man's reality that uh, and you know, I don't mean to say speed in your transformation. I think it was, you know, it's just that that's how the film is set up. But I think the the challenge that most people face is that they don't really get joy from everyday living. And, and I think that it's almost as if we're waiting for something to happen to us sometimes. Um, and, and I think you kind of bring out, because of your personality, it's like you've got that, in, it's that, you've, you've got that in born in your, you know, your DNA. You know, it seems like you're, you're happy-go-lucky to start with, and now you're actually like presently happy-go-lucky. Maybe that's the best way I could I could. Well, here you know I appreciate that. I I also you know you know Matt. I it's not like I don't have my dark days. You know there are days when I wake up, and uh, you know I, I my I'm under assault. You know my mind is like really not my best friend, and I think um, I think that one of the things that happened to me when I would go see some of these big shot speakers is, is I would feel like there's no way I'm ever going to be as together as that. And you know, and the fact is that everybody puts their pants on one leg at a time. It, it's everybody's human, and that there are days where I am depressed, and that you know that you know, sometimes life seems you know, overwhelming to me. And then there are days that are you know that you know that are great, and then there are days that are kind of eh. It's what it means to be human, and and uh, and because you know, and because you have those those days does not mean that you're failing at being human. It means you're experiencing what you know being alive and and uh and i think you're right i think people people have an expectation that there's supposed to be some kind of like you know consistent euphoria and i thought that too that's why i got high you know i use drugs because i you know i i my own my reality was unbearable and i created my own reality you know i wanted to create my own you know i i look at it you know i you know, the, the way I was, you know, when you take, you know, when they give you anesthesia and they tell you to count backwards, mm-hmm. you know, 100, you know, 99, 98, 97. Well, and you pass out at 97. I wanted to be at 98, right? I wanted, like, to be at 98 all the time. And, uh, and it nearly killed me. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, happiness is a result of something. It's not, you know, it's not you know, it's not an object in and of itself. It, happiness is a result of right living. If you you know do the next right thing, you do the next right thing. The next thing you know, like you know, sometimes happiness sneaks up behind me and says, "Hi, I'm here." You know, because I've been doing, all, I've been so busy doing, and not really like not being. And and then I stop for a minute, and the happiness comes behind me and slaps me on the head. Hey, I'm here. Acknowledge me. Look, you know, I forget. 
So, well, that's what I was trying to, you know, kind of get towards, which is, um, you know, the the way that you're going with may I speak frankly dot com, and, and you're sort of taking your your movie, which is the other website is, you know, may I be frank movie dot com. You know, those those two environments, you know, it's kind of a, it's become a business, and and you're now in engaged in this what you call eldering maybe that's the best way to put it where you're you know you're giving right. people the, I don't know if it exists but I like it yeah <laughs> then you could you can use it on your next stage men, uh, <laughs> mention but you know so this this process of now giving people the torch to to try and think a different way you know without being this super over zealot you know transformational career guy um, I'm just that's what I was curious on where you see yourself kind of taking this life that you've created now and and how to you know kind of again not get your not from the movie perspective but get your mind around what what could you do to help create value from a a level of where your book is coming into play now and and where you're building up your community what what, what do you think is the next evolution of of how you'll get into um you know really into your greatness isn't that what i'm supposed to consult with you about <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess i do too many hey, of these podcasts to ask you that question bro you know you're asking me i you know like i, I i've been uh, i've been doing this for so long and mostly um uh you know i'm mostly for free, really. I mean, I, I haven't generated, you know, any, you know, it hasn't really been, um, um, I haven't made a living at it, I, I, but I'm, that's what we're doing now. It's like trying to figure out a way to, you know, to make a difference and, and also have a, you know, a righteous exchange of energy, whereas, you know, compensating happening. Um, because I've just been so, co I've been really involved in, in what, you know, my, what, what the interaction with people on, on a very personal level and even when I go out on screenings and stuff like that, that it hasn't been, I haven't really had my head in that area, but I obviously have been doing not only myself a disservice, but a disservice to the public by not really uh, putting more energy into expanding the reach of the message, you know, or the reach of the possibility, because that's what I am. I reflect the possibility. Again, I don't have a secret weapon, a secret message or anything like that. I see myself as a person that reflects poss a possibility or possibilities. And, and so, um, yeah, so that's where we are right now, you know, uh, and uh, I'm working with you know, my girlfriend and you know, just trying to broaden our platform. So if you have any input or any ideas, <laughs> please feel free. Yeah, well, yeah, that could be another conversation in, 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 at some point. But, you know, I think the way I look at it is it, it, your, exposing, your exposure and your exposing of the message to me is the value. I mean, that to me, whenever I say, when I say hey, you've got to check this movie out, people are like, oh, my God, this guy. I cannot believe that. Like, so that whole, you know, message of exposure, you know, of what you've done, I think is – is the next level if I was to say to you is like okay you know get your exposure machine going and I, I think you know this as well is that once you touch somebody the and you you kind of get you know you, you get the, to the feeling that like this is really important like what you have to do is um, what you what you've been doing what you have to do is important and uh, it's uh, one of those values that you know you can't teach in a 12-step program you can't teach in a uh, a guru that does just transformational speaking, or or a high end Tony Rob Tony Robbins type guy. It's it's really just you know your personality that's driving the whole thing. And I, you know, I really um, again I really commend you on on getting yourself into this and and stepping forward, right? And 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 putting yourself in line to kind of like by accident become sort of a, a spokesperson for uh, really you know being present. And forgiving yourself and all the good messages that I think get missed because we're we're too busy day to day, just trying to get to that next level of trying to, you know, outrun ourselves most of the time. 
Well, Matt, you know, you, uh, I, I really want to point out that whatever, whatever positive qualities that you recognize in the film, you possess your, as well, because otherwise you wouldn't recognize them. You may not, you, maybe you won't uh, attribute them to yourself, but you would not, but that's, that's part of the, you know, like neurotic Michigas that we can't like see this greatness in ourselves. But whatever you saw, whatever you admired, whatever moved you in that film is a part of who you really are, or you would not be able to resonate with it. And that's the important, I think one of the important aspects of the film, which I tell people all the time, because people tell me, hey, you helped change my life. Well, really, I didn't, you did 100% of the heavy lifting. I showed you a picture. And then you went out and you did whatever you did. You did the heavy lifting. All I did was show you that it was possible. You know, and, um, and I think uh, uh, it's like, you know, in, in the past, like when the guy, uh, when I forgot his name, finally broke the four-minute mile, that year a whole bunch of people broke it. They just needed to see that it was possible. What, you mean they couldn't break it before? Yeah, they did. But somebody did it, and next thing you know, other people are doing it. And um, from a spiritual standpoint, um, you, know, you think about the, the crucifixion. The, the last thing that he's, you know, he said is like, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. Well, that's an aspiration. I mean, there is an image it's like again. It's just like a like a, like a you know like a, a sports image. It, this is an image, spiritual sports. Image. Here's a guy, you, you, you know, on a cross. He's saying, "Hey, forget you know forgiveness. That's how important it is. You know, I'm about to. I'm about. This is like my last breath, and this is what I'm saying, right? And so it's an aspiration, and you know, and there is a number of you know spiritual texts, you know, all across the spectrum, you know the the Vedic texts, the Buddhist sutras, you know, all the, you know, all the, you know, everything that has something in it that is, in the, indi indicates an aspiration to ascend from our base, our base, or our base nature. Excellent. I think you hit the nail on the head, which is ascension, not in the biblical way, but more of the ascension of your spirit, your life, your business, anything, but to get that spark and you really have provided it for me and I, I know you've provided it for lots of others. Thank you, man. And, and maybe stepping up is, the, maybe that's what we uh, see conjured up through this conference. You know, like Socrates referred to what we're doing as a, as a Soc well, that Socrates was afterwards, is referred to as a Socratic banter until they get to the truth. And maybe stepping up is what you're looking, you know, what you're looking for is ascension. <laughs> It could be. It was awesome talking to you, Frank, and uh, we, I want to get another one of these conversations at some point. And please, when you're in the New York and New Jersey area, we please let all of our fans know so that we can make sure that we get on your list, because I would love to meet you in person one day. Well, yeah, I'm, uh, my mom uh, is going to be 90 in February. I'm, I'm uh, working on trying to get out there, so uh, um, I'm hoping to fe in February. So in February, I'll give you a call. Where are you, by the way? We're just um, right outside of New York. I'm, we're our office in Clifton, uh, New yes, Jersey. Yes, my mom is in um, near Maple uh, uh, Vauxhall. Yep, yep, that's right around the yep. corner. Yep, awesome. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you, and uh, we really, uh, again, really appreciate everything that you're doing. And I, I am a big, huge fan. And again, to all the listeners and and the listener that's listening to this right now, please, if you haven't seen the movie, go to the website. Uh, I found it on Hulu really, really easily. It's I I know it's up on Hulu still because I, I re watched it recently and I've pointed people out to the fact that it's a it's just one of those if you got an hour and a half or so to kill this is the thing you should do. All right, Frank. Thank you, Matt. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode of the Step Up Podcast with your host Matt Coffey. We'll see you next time.